What's up everyone, Zach from Well Played here. I hope you all had a great Christmas and New Year's break, got to play a ton of games, eat heaps of delicious food, and spend time with family and friends. Now, if you know me, or if you're a follower of the website, you'll know that I'm a massive point and click fan, with my favorite adventure game ever being Broken Sword, Shadow of the Templars by Revolution Software. Fortunately, in 2022, I wasn't able to play as many adventure games as I would have liked, so I decided to make a video on the best 15 adventure games of 2022 based on things like Metacritic and OpenCritic scores, Steam reviews, and of course, Wallplayed's own reviews. This video will be run down in the order of release date. Let's go. First cap off the rank is Siberia the World Before from Microid Studio Paris and Microids. I'm a massive fan of the Siberia series and the world that Benoit Sokol has created. Rest in peace, old mate. But after the disappointment of Siberia 3, I was stoked that The World Before put the series back in the good books, scoring an 8 in my review. The World Before continues the journey of series protagonist Kate Walker in 2005 after the events of Siberia 3, and sees her trying to find out as much information as she can about a mysterious woman from a painting who bears an uncanny resemblance to Kate. This mysterious woman is Dana Rose, a new playable character whose story arc plays out in the 1930s. I really enjoyed how these two timelines were woven together to create a heartfelt adventure and a fitting farewell to Benoit Sokal, whose unique and charming world is on full display here. Norco from Geography of Robots and Raw Fury is a southern gothic point-and-click adventure with a cinematic pixel art style where your brother has gone missing after the death of your mother. In order to track him down, you must follow a fugitive security android around an increasingly surreal and distorted South Louisiana. If that doesn't sound rad, then I don't know what does. It launched to excellent reviews with a Metacritic score of 89 and our very own Chantel gave it a massive shout out in her well-played Game of the Year voting. It's been on my wish list for ages and I finally bought it late last year. I can't wait to get stuck in at some point this year. Next up is Voodoo Detective, a Monkey Island inspired adventure from Short Sleep Studio. It's set in the 1930s on the island of New Guinea, which is rich in voodoo culture, but unfortunately the island has been taken over by chain stores and privileged tourists. Our main man, Voodoo Detective, gets a case where he must help a woman find her lost memory. It's got a beautiful hand-drawn art. I think we're going to hear this a lot in this video. A humorous side that's brought to life by a cracking roster of voice artists and a soundtrack composed by Peter McConnell, who worked on games like the Monkey Island series and Day of the Tentacle. It's currently rated very positive on Steam, and I hope to be able to check it out at some stage this year. This next one comes recommended by the great man Charles Cecil of Revolution Studio, who said before the game came out, With beautiful graphics and a fascinating story, Crowns and Pawns is looking like it will be an excellent point-click adventure. He's talking about Crowns and Pawns, Kingdom of Deceit from Tag of Joy and Thunderfall Publishing. Unsurprisingly, it's inspired by games such as Broken Sword, so expect classic point-and-click puzzles. In fact, the game is led by the art director of Broken Sword 2.5. Playing as Milda, who inherits a house in Lithuania from her deceased grandfather, you're dragged into a search for a long lost relic after discovering the house's more secrets than you anticipated. I've played about 30 minutes and I'm loving it so far. Fans of games like Broken Sword will absolutely relish this game. Lost in Play comes from Israeli developer Happy Juice Games and is published by Joystick Ventures. Like a lot of the games in this video, it's been on my wish list for yonks, pulling me in with its stunning cartoon visuals that harken back to my childhood. The story sees siblings, Toto and Gal, lost in their imagination, and together they must solve puzzles and befriend magical creatures to find their way home. It's got a score of 85 on Open Critic and overwhelmingly positive on Steam, making it a must play for adventure game fans. Justin Wack and the Big Time Hack is the work of Swedish developer Warm Kitten. It's a 2D point click adventure packed with silliness and multiple playable characters where main protagonist Justin must find a way back to the present day after inadvertently sending himself back in time via a microwave at his workplace. However, he swapped places with Clute, a caveman, and making matters worse is that both Justin and Clute must evade a robot from the future trying to erase their existence. It started life as a Kickstarter, which adventure game royalty Ron Gilbert backed and has a very positive rating on Steam.
Not only was Brock the Investigator my third favorite game of 2022, it was also my favorite indie. It's the creation of Cowcat, a single French developer and one that blends point and click and beat em up mechanics with outstanding success. Set in a futuristic city where animals have replaced humans and society split into two classes, you play as Brock, a boxer turned detective crocodile who takes a case that starts off simple but quickly becomes bigger than Brock imagined. Not only that, but Brock is struggling to be a decent stepfather and the narrative has some truly heartfelt moments. It's all backed by a banging 90s cartoon aesthetic that features some fantastic animations and character designs. In fact, everything about this game is simply excellent and there are multiple endings so you have reasons to play it several times. I gave it a 9 in my review and any adventure game fan should check this out either on PC or when it launches on consoles in 2023. Up next is Wayward Strand, a homegrown title from developer Ghost Pattern. It's not a traditional adventure game but there's enough of the genre's DNA coursing through its veins for it to qualify. I played it and I loved it, in fact it was my favourite Aussie mate game of 2022. It's set in the 1970s Australia and you play as Casey, a 14 year old budding journalist whose mum works on board an airship turn hospital. Casey joins her mum on the airship for three days where she'll spend her time conversing with the patients and staff for a school newspaper article. The unique gameplay loop sees everything play out in real time, meaning that at any point over the three days, Casey could be doing one thing but missing out on another. It's got a beautiful art style, a touching narrative and a ton of Aussie flavours. Well played Chantelle McCall gave it a 9.5 in her review and it has an open critic rating of 80, so the reception has been strong. It's available on PlayStation, Xbox and Nintendo consoles as well as PC, so there's no reason why adventure game fans shouldn't give this a crack at some point. It's still surreal to think that in 2022 we got a brand new Monkey Island game helmed by Ron Gilbert and Dave Grossman. Return to Monkey Island is the pair's first game in the series since Monkey Island 2 LeChuck's Revenge from 1991. And while it's a follow up to that title, the duo hasn't completely erased the events of the games that came after their departure. Return to Monkey Island sees good old Guybrush Threewood on the hunt for the secret of Monkey Island, but so is his nemesis, the ghost pirate LeChuck, who happens to have both a crew and a ship, two things that Threewood is lacking. Of course, a race between the two rivals to discover the secret begins, and it's as silly and goofy as you'd expect. The biggest gripe for a lot of fans was the big shift in visual styles, which I'm a massive fan of. Not only does it look amazing, it also feels modern. And once again, unsurprisingly, the voice acting is incredible. It was one of my favourite games of 2022, I scored it a 9 in my review, and it has a Metacritic rating of 86 on PC. It's one that Monkey Island fans won't want to miss. Now Beacon Pines from Hiding Spot and Fellow Traveller is a game that admittedly wasn't on my radar, but after Well Played's Ash Whaling slapped a tasty 9 on it in his review, I was certainly paying attention. Initially a Kickstarter project, Beacon Pines has an incredibly gorgeous aesthetic with the game set within a book and has the player playing as both the reader and the book's main character, Luca. The hook here is that you are the one in control of the narrative and your choices will impact the direction of the story. It has an overwhelmingly positive rating on Steam and is available on both Xbox One and Nintendo Switch as well as PC and Mac. If there's one adventure game I feel guilty about missing last year, it's the excavation of Hobbs Barrow from Cloak & Dagger Games and Wadget Eye Games. Launching to rave reviews, the game has an open critic score of 86 and is coming to the Switch on January 25 this year. The excavation of Hobbs Barrow is a folk horror inspired adventure that follows the journey of antiquarian Thomasina Bateman who is writing a book on the Barrows of England, documenting the treasures she finds buried within. When Thomasina arrives in the small village of Bewley, she finds the townsfolk unwelcoming and unwilling to discuss Hobbs Barrow, and with her contact in Bewley and no-show, she must investigate what exactly happened and what's going on with Hobbs Barrow. I nabbed it on sale late last year and I can't wait to start digging out the secrets of Hobbs Barrow this year. The Case of the Golden Idol from Colour Grey Games and Playstack is another title that has racked up critical and consumer acclaim, with a Metacritic score of 85 and an overwhelmingly positive rating on Steam. It's a murder mystery set in the 18th century where the player assumes the role of a detective trying to uncover the truth and connection of 12 deaths spanning 40 years. The player will need to reconstruct the scene of each death to deduce who committed the crime and how it happened. It's got a gorgeous pixel art style, compelling narrative and gameplay that rewards attention to detail. Certainly a must play for those who consider themselves a modern day Sherlock Holmes. A British point and click comedy adventure, Lucy Dreaming is the work of Tall Story Games. 
The premise sees Lucy, a young girl, explore both her dreams and reality where she'll meet colourful characters who will help her solve puzzles, find a murderer and put an end to her nightmares. With striking art style, voice acting done by Guybrush Street Woods' Dominic Armato and a very positive rating on Steam, it's one to keep in mind for next time you're looking out for something to play. Shadows Over Loathing from Asymmetric is the follow-up to the award-winning West of Loathing. A black and white slapstick comedy RPG featuring stick figures, Shadows Over Loathing sees you travel to Ocean City where your uncle Murray has requested your help in his antique shop. However, upon your arrival, the old man is nowhere to be found and your investigation into his disappearance and the artifacts he's been collecting takes a turn when you stumble across some shadowy plots and a bunch of squirming eldritch tentacles that threaten to bring about the end of the world. With an overwhelmingly positive rating on Steam and a Metacritic score of 82, players and critics love it. Launching to universal acclaim, including a PC Metacritic score of 88 and a big juicy 10 from Well Played's Nathan Hennessy, there's no doubt that Pentiment from Obsidian was one of 2022's biggest surprises. A humble choice-driven adventure that looks like a point-and-click medieval thriller at a glance, this title is an indulgent fictional saga set in the small 16th century town of Tassing in the south of Germany. You play as Andreas Mahler, an artist who becomes embroiled in a murder that has taken place. Andreas takes it upon himself to discover the truth, which involves exploring the dark secrets underlying Tassing. It all takes place in a medieval storybook, which looks simply beautiful. I honestly can't speak highly enough of the art style. Not only is it a captivating experience, but it is jam-packed with facts, making it one for historical buffs. I've spent a little bit of time in Tassing, and I'm chomping at the bit to get back to it. Well, there you go. The best 15 adventure games of 2022. At least according to this video, anyway. Now, I'm sure we've missed a game or two here or there, so please in the comments let us know if we did miss any games that you recommend from 2022, and let us know what you thought of this list. Did we get it right? Did we get it wrong? Furthermore, if you want to see more of these videos, please like this video and sub to the channel because we are doing more video work this year. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.